Hey, good morning, people. How y'all doing out there? Another beautiful, beautiful, beautiful morning. Yeah, I don't people would say it already, so it's beautiful out there. Oh, oh boy. I just said hope that all you folks out there had a good night's rest. As for me, no. For some strange reason, my mind just wouldn't, you know, just wouldn't let me rest, you know, just wouldn't shut down and shut off. Uh, Oh, no, boy. Hey, please be sure to like, um, subscribe, share, whatever it is that you guys do online. I'm not too fear with the lingual of the young people. <laughs> but yeah, we are live on three different platforms. Uh, this page, Let's Get Real, and of course my original Facebook page, um, EK Preacher E. Flanders, and also on Real Right um, YouTube channel. So you can get us there. Um, Tasha, yes, it's an Aquarius thing. <laughs> Sometimes the mind just doesn't want to shut off, you know. Lots of things floating around, you know, different scenarios you're trying to come up with. Um, you're thinking about the day ahead. You're thinking 10 years ahead. So, yeah, there's that. Um, also, um, you know, we, we got some sad news yesterday afternoon. Um, a real good friend of mine. You could say a brother, because we've known each other that long um, on the entertainment front and what have you. And um, we, we got some sad news that, you know, while doing what he, he loves to do, um, he went missing. But we are hoping for the best. We are hoping that, you know, by some stroke of luck that he would be all right. I'm hoping that he would be all right, because... God knows. Sometimes you, you you try to make sense of this thing we call life, and you you come up a little short sometimes because you 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 can't fathom some of the things that you know you experience along life's journey. And we all know that at some point in time that we are all gonna go um, to the great beyond. But some people you don't expect to go so soon, um, and especially in the fashion that they do, you know. So. Yeah. My my mind was a wreck yesterday. It's still a wreck, you know, cuz I could only imagine how the the, the family's feeling right now. I could only imagine how Nevis is feeling right now and uh given what's happening right now in the atmosphere with the politics and what's not sad news is not something that um you know, we need at this point in time. But nevertheless, We want to keep hope alive, and of course, um, if you're out there, if you can just say a prayer uh, for my buddy, my friend, my brother, and his family. Um, He's the son of um, Joseph Leibert, um, former assistant commissioner of police. Um, Those of you who may know him, he's on Facebook, Trevi, so... If you can just share, say a prayer for him and for the family, we'd greatly appreciate it. Trust me. Um, so, if you find that I'm not a little bit, you know, too lively this morning, you know, hopefully in the conversation I just might, you know, get a little more upbeat. But for now, I, I, my mind is all over the place. So, um, forgive me if I seem a little bit, you know, incoherent at times, and you know, my thoughts aren't coming together. That's that's what's happening with me right now. Um, but the show must go on. Life has to go on. And sometimes it's a struggle pushing on when you, you, you get these kind of news, you know. So, um, yeah, so I'm just rambling now. <laughs> so, folks, um, this morning, uh, let me tell you up front that um, once all goes... Um, as planned, we should be having um, the St. Kitts Navy Slaver Party 
candidate for constituency number four, Mr. Samuel Duggins, as our specially invited guest um, this morning. So we're going to chit-chat with him about his journey, um, his political journey, um, his decision to get into elective politics, and of course how um, the campaign is going, and getting to some of his plans um, that he has for the people of constituency number four, and ultimately the people of St. Kitts, um, St. Kitts and Nevis. So you can look forward to that, um, just making sure that everything is good. So by 9.30, we'll be chit-chatting with him. Um, before we get to, to Samuel, though, of course, you know, we got to touch on what's happening um, politically. As you know, the back and forth um, is going on between the, um, the, the, the different fractions of the former team unity. So, um, and it's, it, it, it's, it's becoming, I, I don't want to say a joke, but that's ultimately what it is. And I want to put something into perspective for you guys. Um, remember how I keep saying that I don't think any political party would want to touch me as a candidate or have me as a candidate. I might be wrong, but I'm going to put this out there right now. If a political party does decide to take a chance on me personally as a candidate to run in an election and ultimately go into parliament and into cabinet, I am going to be a militant inside that cabinet and that party. And I'll tell you why. Even though after an election, you... You um you have to swear allegiance to the Queen, her heirs and successors. And you have to go or you take an oath of secrecy in cabinet. People can say what they want and I may be judged differently for it, but I'ma tell you this. It ain't gonna happen. Because my allegiance will not be to no queen, her ears and successors. To hell with them people here. You understand? And this oath of secrecy, most if not all of our leaders right now are breaking that oath. And have broken that oath. Whether by leaking or discussing it with close friends and families. You hear? So that oath, in my estimation, is shit. Let's just call it for what it is. And I'll play a couple of clips for you this morning from Mark Brantley's On The Mark show, and you'll understand why, a little further, why I say that that oath is shit. I would not be held to that. You know why? Simply because information sharing will be at the top of my priority. I'm always about information sharing. The more information people have, the better decisions they make. And they could avoid a lot of things. And a lot of things could be done the right way with information sharing. Matt Brantley went on a rant last night about the water project and the water company, Bead and some other company that Patches wanted to bring. Right? And if these gentlemen were truthful with the people who sent them to parliament. These type of information would have been available to the public so the public could know how to operate going forward. But now what you have is a falling out and now the information coming out. That in cabinet, Bede was ready to deliver water. And guess what? Patches wanted another company. That is what Mark Brantley is telling us now. So the mere fact that we don't have proper water supply and water shortage, that sometimes some of night you can't even wash your bars because water off, is because in cabinet, a minister decided that he don't want to go with the company that's there. He wants to go with another company. 
Whether he had vested interest in it or getting a kickback out of it, we don't know. But we only know just finding out about this after the fallout. And when we keep asking, well, what about we water? What about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? Oh, give the government a chance. The government is still young. We have to get an assessment of what's going on and something, something, something. Give us a chance. Not knowing that in cabinet, somebody is stopping what the people of the Federation supposed to done get. The Bastia High School. Proper health care. Somebody somewhere inside there stopping the process. But we don't get that information. All we get is give us some time. The government is still young. These things take time. No, they don't take time. They don't take time. They're already in place. Then you have another situation with the prison. Months now do I have been talking about that. Months now I've been talking about that. Remember, I tell you, check and see who doing the construction work over at the new prison. Nobody take me serious. See, Sean went now and see now Ham all up and down. And if we didn't even know my name, Ham, it's only people who in government might know the name, but people in the general public may not know his ties to the prime minister. It's only now they're falling out, they're telling on one another. And remember, I tell her, you know, I want this thing to go as long as it possibly can. So we could get all the juicy and gory details of the shit that went down in our cabinet. And this is a blot on Timothy Harris' prime ministership, you know. He could not get his cabinet in order to lead his cabinet properly to get the work done for the people. Their claim to fame is the peace program and the PAP. That is their claim to fame. Meantime, our health care is shit. Our water supply is shit. The cost of living is high. The working conditions is shit because you see mold here, there and everywhere. You understand? A lot of things that need to be fixed ain't fixed. And the excuses that we got Oh, the government young. Give the government time. But still praise us because we're the best government we've ever had in the region. Or in the history of this country. Oh, you hear lie? Oh, you hear the garbage? <laughs> oh, you hear lie? And oh, you hear garbage? Well, all you hear it for yourself. We're going to pull up Mr. Mark Brantley now. So he could tell all you all we went down inside cabinet that you did not know. And when we're trying no, to no, figure no, no. out when we're trying to figure out, right? What really going on in we country, we can't get no straight answers. You hear? No straight answers we could get. No straight answers whatsoever. Just a bag of lie leading up to 2020. And, and people fell for it, you know. Because people sent them back and added the numbers. You understand? People sent them back. My God. And so, when you... God, where's my card? When you think about just how much lies they told us. It is shameful. It is disrespectful. It is distasteful. And frankly, <laughs> I don't see where we as a people should send these people back to government. I was waiting around to hear of all the gory details. So when they were adamant that I needed to be abusing this person, abusing this person, and leaving this person alone. No, I was waiting on some more information. And now you guys understand why. Because I just want you to blame Timothy. Yes, Timothy is to blame. But I want to know what, what your part was in it. 
before I just absolve you and forgive you and go with you. I wanted to know. So let me hear for myself. We're going now with Mark Brantley and all we used to go on in cabinet and why we could not get certain things delivered to us. Why we could not get certain things delivered to us. People, are you listening for yourself? Marijuana. They say when you want something, we used to have a private joke in the cabinet. When you want something dead, you send it to Lucy because you know what he got here. Tell yourself, he now come out. So anytime you hear something has been put in juicy hands, tell yourself, well, that's it. God bless the dead. I hear. I hear why, self. When you want something dead, God bless the dead. Give it to juicy. Oh, yeah. And they came to us in 2020 knowing all of this. Knowing all of this. And still told us that team unity is the best thing since sliced bread. They knew all along. They knew all along. The, the fellow they were named. No. Can't remember his name now. They ain't know what the hell they were doing. You hear? They had no clue. We were being taken for a ride. Now we go back to Mark Brantley again to hear what else he got to say about his former cabinet colleagues. Let's go, Mark. The fellow there in him. Can't remember his name now. The, 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 the representative from number one. Patches, yes, he. Refuse. Refuse. To allow the bead water to go into the, the, the system. What? They think that we don't remember all of these things? He brought another company called Earthworks or something say he want them to do the work. Big confusion with Bead. Bead said they had water available. What? They don't think that these things will be spoken about? I said, my ass. Doggy Ways again? I said, my ass. You, you, you hear? So when you're trying to figure out how is it we had no water when you're trying to figure out how is it the marijuana thing ain't come to fruition as yet when you're trying to figure out how is it the courthouse was allowed to develop mold when you go home people in Kayan, you go home and you turn on your tap and no water come you live in boardwalk you turn on your tap and the water trickle and you wonder why is it the government ain't fix it yet because they couldn't agree in cabinet for us. Patches who claims that he got unfinished business. Yes, you got unfinished business to do. Because you ain't do your goddamn job when you were there. No job you've ever had, you've ever done it properly. Not one. And that's why you get the most fired ever in the history. From one job you get fired eight times. I thought five was the record, but you went you went a, a extra three, eight times. You get fired from a job. Oh, yeah. Here is why we can't get water up to now. Because Patches was adamant that some artworks company is who's supposed to do the job. When bead already, don't do it. Don't get pay with it. But Timothy wants to convince us that there's fiscal prudent management. Are you here, Tory? People, are you here, Tory? No mark a spill he got. Because he was fired, kicked out of the cabinet. He now coming to tell us why certain things couldn't be done for us, the people. People understand what he has been saying for the longest while. It's not that things can't get done, you know. It's that you have a bunch of puppy show in we government and in we cabinet who can't get nothing done. So now all of a sudden, that's what I tell you, you know, when they say juicy, 
is now the Minister of Education. And now the Bassey High School going to build. Me laugh. Because you hear Mark just about Juicy. When you want anything dead, send it get Juicy. So they knew all these things leading up to 2020. And they still come back and tell us that team unity is the best thing for the country. And when you ask people like Sandra Quilly and the rest of them, well, what makes this government better than any other government that we've had? They can't answer you. The only thing that they could go to is to repeat the garbage that Timothy keep repeating. We want to help the people. People is first. People is this. Who people you talk about? Who people you talk about? Ah, you want to hear more to we? Let me go back to Mark. Because here, here, sing like a canary. Sing, my lord, sing. And so you start to peel back the layers and you start to look. And you say, well, who have equipment doing the work? Who selling the blocks and the masonry products for the job? Who providing security on the site? Mm -hmm. Who processing the passports that they're going to be selling? Who getting campaign money from this deal? And you start to put it strand on strand on strand. And then you say, oh, this not really got nothing to do with no new jail, you know. This is really a scheme. A scheme designed to put money in some people's pockets. And the people are not you and me. I want that to be very clear. The people are friends and family. Doggy, what you just say? I said, me ass. Mm. Dwyer have been talking about this prison thing for the longest while, you know. Mark was still a part of the government when Dwyer was talking about this and he said absolutely nothing. Sean said nothing. John L. said nothing. Lindsey Grant said nothing. Alexis Jefford says nothing. Eric Evelyn said nothing. Akila said nothing. None of them in there was working on our behalf. He said nothing. No, he talk because he outside now. And I must just absolve these people and just blame Timothy one. Why well, was supposed to check him? Ain't that they said that team unity was gonna be that no one party could be involved in corruption because we're all going to hold each other accountable. Now that they say, well, that was a damn lie. So now all you understand why me EK didn't want to just join Mark and Sean and just abuse Timothy one. Now why you understand? Because that's what they wanted, you know. For EK and the rest of us to just go and just continue to abuse Timothy as they claim and blame him for everything and absolving them of any wrongdoing. They were just innocent bystanders bystanders you understand what's going on are you understand fully now what's going on i don't just want to get rid of timothy one all of them got to go we the law there's such a thing as an accomplice i remember i tell i so two weeks now there's such a thing as an accomplice i want to know what you know and when you knew it because the murderer ain't going to jail. Who hide the body and who tell lie and who drive the vehicle going to jail too. Mark Bradley went on to say just before we get to our guests that somebody going to jail for this thing. Somebody going to jail. The new prison, somebody going to jail. Well, Mark, I hope you don't end up over there. I really trust and hope that you don't end up over there. Who here? I hope so. But anyhow, it's 26 after 9. Don't forget our guest, Samal Duggan, comes up at 9.30. But I want the people of St. Kitts and Nevis to understand on all platforms that you cannot absolve these people of anything. All of them complicit. You heard them talk about one another. He said Lindsey Grant is the best tourism minister. 
Mark Bright, they're the best foreign minister, but yet still he couldn't fire patches who breach international security protocols. Timothy could not take patches off the radio from abusing citizens and not doing what the hell how we put them in the UN to do. You hear Mark say? When I tell her, you go and look and see who doing the construction by the prison. I remember I come up on the way they say so. Nobody take me serious. See, Sean went up there now when you see Hamadou security. The Chinese, them up there walk. So nobody from St. Kitts and Nevis could go prep the site there. Just the Chang Gang them. They accused dog here selling out this country to foreigners. Now look what I go on. Imagine we live to see a Chinese man. And Timothy people them. Cho wanna we parliamentarians off a sight. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. When I say saying this is not a real place, this is what I mean. This is what I mean. And Sean now coming acting brand new. You in that sitting with Timothy who's seven years. And you know that this is what Timothy up to? But we've been telling you. You couldn't pay attention to see, and now you want to come and want to be we prime minister? Bye now. <laughs> no, 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 thank you. No, thank you. You could stay with Pachi, be with Mark and the rest of them. No, thank you. Are you here, Mark? If you want anything dead, send it to Juicy Byron. And Timothy, a whole government with you right now. That speaks volumes. Patches refuse to allow bead to put the water that we need right now into the system. So patches deny you water. Where patches going again? Well, thank God he ain't coming back again. Timothy outsmart him and Timothy bring Jackie. Fired again. And you think Sean didn't know that patches who ran on a PAM ticket was denying the people of Kayon water. Kayon people, Sean knew because he was in cabinet. Because if Mark no, Sean no. Sean knew that the reason why we ain't getting the water is because Patches, one of his candidates, was denying bead from doing their work. And now see Sean come and bring Bakaliko Giyayo. Are you going to vote for Bakaliko? Are you going to vote for Sean? Because a vote for Barclay because a vote for Sean. Yeah, let me get down to the word politics. A vote for Barclay is a vote for Sean. And Barclay is my friend. When I tell you my friend, my real friend. Sean is my real friend too. But not with this garbage and nonsense that they did for seven years. They got to go. Plain and simple. This is no hatred and this is no politics. They're telling on one another right now. And based on that, they all have to go. Anywhere in St. Kitts and Nevis, you come home and after 9 o'clock, you can't turn on your pipe or take a bath. Patches is responsible for that, according to Mark. Patches was on a PAM ticket. It's 9.30 now, time to get our guests in. Patches was on a PAM ticket. So Sean knew. Because cabinet is collective responsibility. Tell me a lie. Who want to say he can play politics now, which means uh, Mark can play politics because you hear him for yourself. Sing, Mark, sing. He's a Calypsonian now. That's supposed to be your next job. Hey, hey. All right, people. We're going to take a little break, and then when we come back, we are going to be speaking with the Labour Party's candidate for constituency number four, Mr. Samal Doggins. And as the people on Facebook affectionately refer to him, pretty boy Samal. <laughs> Omelin better watch yourself in some of these Facebook people, you know. But we're coming back, people. So stick around. Don't go too far. If you need to drink a cup of water just to fathom what you just heard, go and do that. We're coming back. Don't move. <laughs>
All right, folks, we are back here. Good morning, Mr. Duggins. How are you, sir? Can't hardly hear you, my lord. Your microphone. Check your microphone. Make sure that you're good to go. Okay, that should do it. Good morning. Good, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing pretty good, man. How about you? Uh, I'm here. I'm here doing well. It's a nice. wonderful day in sunny St. Kitts. Good to hear. Good to hear. Good to hear. Well, yes. Mr. Mr. Duggins, we're going to um, get started with our conversation. And of course, our first question um, out the gate would have to be, um, how are things going on the campaign trail? I mean, you're no stranger to the politics, of course. Um, you know, but why choose the Labour Party at this time to move forward into politics and how things going well EK, um for me right now the campaign trail has been quite exciting mm -hmm. um i must admit quite tiring as well because <laughs> you know, um, i have a particular mandate that right. before election day i must knock on every single house within the constituency good sound Pam Labour never voted before. It doesn't matter. I must knock on every single door. So I'm out beating the pavement day in, day out. Um, last night I was finished after nine. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, um, but nonetheless, I'm, I'm quite encouraged and I'm enjoying the process. As tiring as it is. It's, it's, <laughs> it's an enjoyable process. It's quite exciting. It's a labor of love, my lord. All right. So. Exactly. You are a candidate for the St. Kiss Nevis Labour, Labour Party. What prompted Indeed. you to accept um, that invitation to be a part of the Labour team? Why Labour? Uh, well, there are a number of um, factors that went into play with that, EK. Uh, mm -hmm. First and foremost, for me, I, um, I am actually the great-grandson of one of the founding members of the Labour Party. Oh, yeah. So, yes. Oh, okay. So, um, Mr. Nathan, who started the party, along with Mr... Sebastian and others is actually mm -hmm. my great grandfather. Wow. So it's a part of my entire DNA to begin with. Mm -hmm. And in that DNA, you know, one of the things uh, my grandfather wrote a book about his father. And in the process, we would have conversations. And I learned a lot about, you know, the whole legacy of how the, the, the movement was established and even the family's involvement. And one of the things I recognized, there was so much that I saw in common, you know, just the love for people. And, you know, like he was telling me, like, they would go around and to the plantations at the time and try to teach people to read late at night because it was almost illegal for people to be educated. And, wow. you know, they would do a lot of work like that to empower the, the masses of people against the, the, the order of the dead, you know. And I find myself doing a lot of that as well so there's a direct correlation but beyond the history and the family connection there's also a crisis currently happening in the country we uh, mm -hmm. see um, our democracy at stake you know uh, when we look at the, the affairs of today we recognize that our current government is certainly not fit for a healthy democracy Mm -hmm. There's nowhere within a uh, eleven member parliament that three should be leading as a majority. Three could never be a majority of eleven. Mm. And then we could go back to even the comments made by members of the, the, the unity construct against each other and recognize this cannot be healthy for our country and our democracy. And I'm a firm defender of democracy. I'm a firm defender of human rights because I believe in people and that people form the ultimate power. Mm -hmm. All right. Since you believe in those things, what are some of the things that you intend to bring to politics and ultimately government to make sure that those pillars of society, democracy, transparency, integrity, um, good governance, um, or even buttress up or even introduce more into St. Kitts and Nevis? Well, um, first and foremost, I, I must say that I could only control my actions overall. Right. And I bring exactly what I wish to see in politics. Like I said to you, my plan is to knock on every door. And as simple mm -hmm. as that seems, that in itself brings a whole new approach to politics. 
because our politics has been so divisive over the years. We have your Pam, your Pam, if your Labour, your Labour, and in between, like, it's almost like nobody caters across the fences. You know, for me, my policy is everyone is Ketisha, saying everybody's a part of our federation, saying it's a Nevis. And our federation is a small federation when you look at the global scale. So I see everybody as one. So my approach has been go in, speak with everybody, understand all the issues. I've met persons who say something like, we'll never vote for you. Mm -hmm. And my comment to them is simple. That's fine. But when elected, I still have to serve you as a member of our country. So what are your concerns nonetheless? Right. And for me, it's that kind of approach, that all-inclusive approach, that approach that says, no matter your politics, I am still here to serve everybody. And once I could bring that to the table, I think that will go a long way. Because that's democracy. Democracy says people matter most. Now, mm -hmm. in light of that as well, just my entire approach of how do you empower and develop the communities within our nation? And EK, you know um, of some of the work I've done for decades, right? Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, um, my first encounter with you was back in entertainment some <laughs> years Boy, ago. Boy, donkey years. <laughs> no, it's just this morning it came to mind and I was thinking about that song. Mm -hmm. Stop playing with my mind. Yes. Um, you know, <laughs> that was a long time. <laughs> they don't know you from them days, EK. They don't know you from them days. With that crew and all them guys, oh, man. Yeah. yeah, man. Beyond and the whole crew, man. That's right. But when you go even as far back as that, mm -hmm. we talk about democracy. We also have to mention the different sectors of society. And for too long, our entertainers and artistic sector has been marginalized as mm -hmm. if they don't matter. And I mm -hmm. want to shed light to recognize all these sectors as a viable aspect of our entire economy and society. Right. All right. Well, what what are some of the plans that you have for entertainment? Because I'm 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 rooting for you to be the minister of entertainment. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've been beating this pavement for so long, and if you look at the world around, you can see that the orange economy is a big part of um the global economy, and it, it, it's it's in the billions. And exactly, it's fundamental. The, right, and this needs to be developed even further here in Saint Kitts and Nevis. So, what are some of the plans you have for that? How do you intend to approach that? So, you know, EK, um, those plans have already started to be in place. When mm -hmm. you look at my involvement in entertainment, like you said, it goes way back. Mm -hmm. Now, every artist almost that came up in the 2000 era could give you a story of some input. You know, um, Infamous. When Infamous came out and I met him and we had discussions, you know, we, we had intense discussions, but infamous when he went to Canada, he went to my brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Okay. Highlight's first performance, I think it was outside of Kayon, was for my birthday bash. Mm -hmm. right. uh, when you look at the development right, of right. Aspects, That's true. <laughs> like Party Central, when you look at the development of Island Expressions and what it has done, when you look at even, and you know, big up Ian Rookie Phipps, you know, on Party Central, because, yeah, it's genius. Definitely, man. When you look at the development of things like Inception, big up the Inception team again. And, you know, I've had my own little involvement in, in all these eras, so it's not something that I'm saying when elected. This has already been done. Right. You know, yeah. Nietzsche B. You know, I've organized mm -hmm. regional shows for a number of artists, including Nietzsche B. Flew him out to Antigua, put him on television. You know, like, these are the things. I've had television shows aired throughout the, the region showcasing our local talent. So as a, somebody, as a minister, it would just be to improve upon these infrastructures mm -hmm. and, and solidify them. Because as an individual, there's only so much you can do. Your voice could get somewhere, but imagine what it's like from a government standpoint. Mm -hmm. When I 
call a St. Lucia, or I could call a Jamaica and say, let's have an artist exchange. Right. So your festivals, we send a delegation over. Our festivals, you send a delegation over. That's exposure. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the grants that we plan to put in place as a, as a party, as a labor government, that would help these artists to go on tours. And you organize mm -hmm. these tours. In fact, I've been talking to one of the top producers in the U.S. who's preparing to build an offshore studio in St. Kitts. This is somebody that records for Beyonce, Cardi B, mm -hmm. Jay-Z. And sometimes they want studios when they, where, to get away and clear their mind. Right. And he has already agreed in principle to the concept and idea. We are now starting to discuss the details as to how mm -hmm. we could manifest that. Good stuff. All right. So moving away from, from, from entertainment, um, what are some of the other things that you have um, picked up in canvassing in your community specifically um, that needs addressing? Yes. Uh, you know what? Sadly, um, Constituency 4 has been neglected so much that there are so many issues that I recognize. Mm -hmm. um, and one, day, one of the main issues, for me, well, a few of the main issues that I see, infrastructure, is a huge issue in constituency four. You know, you have um, roads, so much unfinished roads that lead to de these developments that truth is, I think our development as a people must be considered um, through the development of infrastructure. And all of these dirt roads and unfinished roads that are washed away every time rain falls and people cannot access their properties, so then you, it creates a huge problem. So that's one thing. I want to ensure that these communities get roads so that they can further develop these communities, which increase the housing stock, because once you can access your property, then you have a greater impetus to actually build and construct. Plus, we have a wonderful construction plan that Congress would have um, gave some, given some details to. Mm -hmm. So when you put all of these together, you see you have access and then you have an easier um, path towards building. And mm -hmm. that's one aspect. But one of the, the more passionate aspects for me would be agriculture. Uh, there you go. And constituency four is huge when it comes to agriculture. When we look at Jack and and the Spencers in fishing. When we look at um, Roger Otley, Udas, fishing, and Sir Patrick, these are all nationally recognized as some of our top fishermen, all from the constituency. When you look at um, our farmers, there's so many, again, farmers from the constituency that's recognized as top farmers nationally. But yet, somehow, the support has been very weak to a lot of these um, farmers and fisher folks. So I want to improve that. Because what we don't tend to recognize as a country, in studying the statistics, St. Kitts annually, our food import bill is roughly 130 some odd million dollars annually. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. And most of that can be produced here. So the idea is if you just focus on that to begin with, there's a hundred and thirty plus million dollars floating around for our people to partake in. That in itself is an economy. But let's go further. We produce more food than Antigua, St. Martin, Anguilla, and all the other countries around us. So imagine what's that, what that is like now to be able to now produce for them as well. Mm -hmm. But then let's go even further. Our, the Caribbean cruise industry is doing very well and developing. Each cruise ship has about three to 5,000 persons. Imagine provisioning for these cruise ships. So when you put that entire scope together, we are talking of a multi-billion dollar industry and just pro providing food. Hmm. 
And it is all possible because I supply cruise ships from my farm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when hmm. the cruise ship comes here, they come, they actual lettuce, they actual mint. And they actually love the mint. So they, they often tend to wait until they come to, to collect the mint. <laughs> the mint from you. Okay. Good business, my lord. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. this is, again, this isn't something I'm just pulling out the sky. Mm -hmm. These are things that I'm actually doing. And there's actually a framework from production to harvesting to packaging to distribution and marketing. And then on the end of that, to recycling. Because a big part of the way forward in agriculture and any industry is what do you do with the waste? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've started the Sargasm project um, on the island, and we are looking at how do we convert that problem into a, a viable industry and an economic opportunity for our country as well. And we have, we have found some really good ways of, of doing that. So for me, agriculture across the board is going to be a huge thing. And I've identified a number of farmers that I see that are willing and able to be a part of this major revolution. When you look at Gideon Farm and what they're doing with the organic farming, mm -hmm. wonderful job at Gideon Farm. When you look at Humble Jed and what he's doing with the cattle farming, when you look at um, Silly D and what he's doing with cattle farming, there's so many persons, and I, and I mentioned um, the guys in fishing, you know, and there's so many areas that once we tap into these persons, provide electricity, um, supply to their farms, provide adequate water, because that's a big thing again. We, we, we keep running into this water problem. When St. really does not have a water problem, what we have is a storage problem. Mm. Because we have enough rainfall to provide water all year. But most of it runs off or soaks to the soil. Mm. If we were to capture that water, like a simple remedy for a farm, if you put a 20 by 20 shed on a farm, a guttering and a water tank, you'll be able to water your farm all, all year hmm. in a country like ours. Because the water that's captured from that shed will be channeled into that tank. And every time it rains, even if it rains for five minutes, generally that tank will be... It goes in there. There you go. So a lot of these ideas is what I want to bring from a national level to bring into agriculture and show the simplicity that pushes us leaps and bounds beyond where we are. Okay. Well, I have a question for you because sure. I've, been a, I've been around for, for, for quite a while you know, paying attention to what goes on in politics and government. And I've had numerous ministers of agriculture come and go, numerous directors, numerous pierces, and they all seem to have the weary it all as to what needs to be done. But in terms of putting it into light and getting the, the, the funding to get it done, something is amiss, something is a disconnect. Because <laughs> for the past 15, 20 years, I've been talking about um, food security and the, the kind of monies that are allocated in the budget for the Ministry of Agriculture. How do you intend to address those situations? And that's you, you, you have the simple. ideas. Yeah, that's why I talk about simplicity. Mm -hmm. But then there's also another factor that we must recognize. Global warming is one of the, 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 the is a global challenge right now. Mm -hmm. And I have recognized that there are a number of institutions globally that are ready to tap into the generation of um, or the storage of carbon. Now, agriculture mm. is one of the major means of doing that, right? So once you have that, you have a world of funding out there for all of these activities. Mm. And I'm not just speaking. I had the ocean, I, I, the ocean Foundation was a part of the project that we started with the Sagazo. Mm -hmm. And the Ocean Foundation, that is one of the mandate. So I've been tapping into this already. So I'm okay. saying I, these channels are already there. It's just for me now to tap into them from a national level and direct a ministry in that, in that area. So it's not just government funding and, and our tax dollars. This is tapping into all the right avenues so that we could bring that additional funding and investment to our country. Mm -hmm. And it's there. 
I'm I'm not asking. I'm telling you, it's there. We started it. Hmm. It's right there. <laughs> Look, I, I mean, I, I've been having these conversations about agriculture for the for the longest while, and you know, having interviews with um, farmers and fishers about their needs and their wants, and then you have the government pushing back and say, "Well, we provide these things, but we we we." So, I would want to know, like, how would you set up a system where there is accountability for the resources and the connection between the resources and the people who need the resources how, how do you intend to deal with that mr minister well, of agriculture and that is generally set up by establishing a vision a lot mm -hmm. of times accountability comes in in the vision the complete vision being articulated and mm -hmm. I think that is where our agriculture has really fallen short. I don't think the country has bought into our ultimate vision. Like, what is our plan for food security currently? Mm -hmm. Do you know? No. Exactly. I don't so know. then, what are you? What what would anybody be held accountable to? Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I see where you're going so, with this. So the first thing is establishing a vision that our country could buy into. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Once we have a, a vision that we can buy into, then it becomes easy now because everyone becomes a stakeholder because they understand. So the lady that's planting some tomatoes in her backyard will understand how her 10 pounds of tomatoes fit into the national output. Mm -hmm. Because if your output is to have 50 tons of tomatoes annually, then we know what percentage 10 pounds contributes to our national output. Right. And everyone becomes now a stakeholder. So the first part in accountability is establishing a clear vision for agriculture. What do we plan to achieve over the next five years? And then after you determine the what, then how do we plan to achieve this? Mm -hmm. And then that comes down in so many factors, because like I said, it's the backyard garden, it's the major farmers, it's the part-time farmers. They all contribute to this. So I think our agriculture, correctly as you've indicated, has been lacking in accountability simply because we lack vision. Mm -hmm. We lack vision, because if you know what the vision is, then you know how much resources to put towards something. Because if, let's take tomatoes again, using it for an example. If you know there's a farmer that wants to produce 50 tons, and your output is 50 tons, and then there's another farmer that wants to produce 20 tons, then you now know that you have a problem on your hand that you need to rectify. Because that's 70 tons versus your 50 ton expected output. Okay. Now you have to invest in both. But if you have a clear vision, then you know how to organize your investment but if you don't know what you want to produce you're just throwing the money around willy-nilly mm -hmm. you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. it makes, look look it, it makes complete sense now because like i told you i've been having conversations with these people and they say well we gave this 10 million dollars here and nothing and then wait wait so it's all a matter of <laughs> yeah go ahead no you made reference to that 10 million again that irks me. You know why? Mm -hmm. What did we get from that ten million? I can't say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but this is it. I, I because really we don't can't plan say. a clear vision. You don't know what you expect back. Mm -hmm. I mean, some political mileage. That, that that's probably that was probably the idea. Right. But we need. Food security is a real issue. Like, let us make no mistakes. I'm in agriculture, and I could tell you because I have to deal on a global scale. There are times coming ahead where food will be difficult to source. Mm -hmm. Are we preparing ourselves to start being self-sufficient? And to me, the answer is no. Because you invest 10 million and you can't show return on investment. Hmm. That is a serious problem. Not just for the politics, but for our own security as a people. 
we need to be able to feed ourselves. And the truth is, Sankis is well poised to feed the region. For, our name is Laya Miga. Laya Miga. Hmm. Understand that? Yeah, land, land of fertility. Miga. Fertility, my land. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We can feed the region. Hmm. But what are we doing? And it starts from the top down. And that is why I am so passionate about agriculture as a farmer and somebody who had taken it on seven years ago on my shoulder to start moving the country into a more secure space. I now recognize that there's room at the, the top for that thinking and that expertise to actually make this happen. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it, EK. I have one of the largest hydroponic operations on the island already. I'm doing it. I'm not telling somebody about a dream. I'm telling you about a practical position that could be expanded to a national level. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, I'm bored. I'm, I'm on board. Once you, you, you have the vision and you have the plan, I'm definitely on board. Um, somebody was asking me on WhatsApp, though, how do you intend to um, bring that culture from a very early age? Because, you know, in high school and, and, and primary school, we do a little bit of agriculture and we but you know some people get up and they be lawyers and doctors and teachers but how do you get the the i say you know you need to do it from the top it has to be at the top without a doubt but how without. do you get it down to the grassroots now to make sure that you know even a child in primary school understands what the vision is so once you establish the vision again is communication um mm -hmm. you have to get the national buy-in but beyond that it comes to the avenues in which you communicate now, um, even at my level already, I invite all the schools within the jurisdiction to my farm. So I have eight, nine-year-olds, ten-year-olds, when they see me in the street, it's like, somehow when we come into the farm again, somehow mm -hmm. we want to come back to the farm. Now, as simple as that sounds, you know what that is? That is passion. An interest. Mm -hmm. An interest. And once you continue that and you make that part of their daily lives and you create activities where they could do a little backyard farm, where they plant a tree and they understand what it is like to plant something from a seed and see it be a fruit. These are all things that buy, that, that buy in the community interest from a young age. Mm -hmm. And then once you do that and you, there's a clear vision and they see where they fit into that vision and they understand that we are operating into a, a multi-billion dollar industry so there's room for you to make money because that's another thing. It's like most time we see farming as a hobby or something for all people to do when they have nothing else to do. Like this is a viable industry. Mm -hmm. This is a viable industry. And we haven't even touched yet on the marijuana industry. But let's go down that road there now because recently <laughs> we heard um, the, 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 the former foreign minister, um, the premier of Nevis, um, made mention of that. And he's saying that um, it's, it's a lack of will. Because they sent it over to the legal department headed by the AG, and it, it ended up in a dead note. But barring that, the legislation that I said, the piece of legislation that I saw, um, with regard to the 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 ganja, the cannabis industry, I think that was written by somebody who don't even know what cannabis is. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that that piece of legislation to me needs some serious revisiting because. It, it, it is contradictory because we all know, anybody who go ganja knows that you can say, okay, I have five trees, but you don't know how much pounds of usable buds you're going to get from those five trees. Sometimes you get more, sometimes you get less. So the, the, the law has to be a little bit more flexible in terms of how it defines trees and pounds and all these type of things. So what are your plans? Let me hear what are your plans and visions for the, the, the cannabis industry. How, how would you move forward with it? No, EK, um, a lot of this is tried and tested already globally. Mm -hmm. A lot of it. So we don't need to reinvent, reinvent the wheel. Reinvent the wheel. Thank you so much. Thank it. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. So um, the specialists in UE in Jamaica, we are already in conversations. 
we don't need to reinvent the wheel. The guys that establish St. Vincent, Jamaica, Canada, we are already in discussions. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. Reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. And we take the models that have, and, and the, we are now in a stage where all the mistakes made in other countries, we don't have to remake those mistakes. So we, we, we revisit these plans, review them, remove any areas that we found were mistakes by other countries, and then we proceed. Mm -hmm. And it's that simple. The plans are all there. There are plans for Belize, there are plans for St. Vincent, there are plans from Jamaica, there are plans from Canada, there are plans from Germany, there are plans from um, the multiple states across the U.S. And you tap into the right persons, you have all of it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, to tell you exactly how we're going to do A, B, C, they're all there in the plans. And we know from a government standpoint, we'd have to review all plans and see what best suits St. Kitts and Nevis as a country, given the, 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 the soil type, given the, the geographical space, the land available, given the, the, the topography, given, because all of this must be taken into account. Given even the direction, do we want it to be ag, um, a part of an agro-tourism industry? Do we want it simply for export alone? There's so many avenues to explore with this. Mm -hmm. And we now just have to, as a country, and also with the inclusion of the wider population, figure out what works best for us as a people. Because I, do, I also don't think that the government alone should make these decisions. Mm -hmm. You need to include the people. Input, of, of course, people. without the input of the people. So these are all things that once, um, once this election is called, hopefully soon, and you have a new Labour government, we will be bringing forward. These are some of the skeleton plans. What do you think as a people? And we get the input and we formulate what we have and we move forward. All right. Well, since that you touch on that, I, I want to go some, a little deeper into the, the politics. Not that I really want you to go down that road, but... <laughs> <laughs> but okay. I'm here. What are you saying? Real talk, right? <laughs> real talk. Real, let, let, let's get real. But... The, yeah. the, the kind of politics that I want to see moving forward that we've seen so far is a politics where information is not shared. There's sensationalism in um the, 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 the media, the mediocre things like, you know, paving a road and then you want a big ceremony for that. Um, there's no real policy formulation, no vision, as you say. And so without a vision, people perish. So in terms of information sharing, how do you intend to go about sharing the information with the general public step by step and the reason why i ask you that is because for the past seven years we have seen a government lie to us at every step of the way and now that they're falling apart you're now hearing that somebody was blocking something in cabinet because they wanted to go this way or that way i'm of the opinion if the people sent me to parliament and the people sent me into cabinet i have a responsibility as a minister to report back to them in a timely manner when certain things can't be done so how would you operate in terms of sharing information with the people even though cabinet falls under this oath of secrecy or whatever the hell it is um i i really don't subscribe to that but how would you um deal with that given what you've just said well what i could tell you as part of my own mandate um is something i i've taken from one of my mentors and my plan is, once elected, to hold monthly town hall meetings with my constituency mm -hmm. from day one, all the way through. So this isn't come back at election time to campaign. This is, I am here to serve you, and every month I must sit down with you and discuss the matters of the day. Mm -hmm. Get your input, share with your division. And something like that, I believe, will go a long way in what you're saying. Because if you have to sit down every month, you must share what's happening month by month. Mm -hmm. And they will have their input month by month. And you will get their buy-in month by month. So if this month is a problem, then they will be abreast with that problem. And for me, that's something that I hold dear to me. Because in a constituency like mine as well, I hear too many 
complaints that you you vote for the the politician and then you don't see them for the next five years mm -hmm. and you know I, I can't understand that because if you put yourself to service of a people why wouldn't you be there during the time that you're there to serve them hmm. like i th that just doesn't register in my brain <laughs> well it, the, 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 ex the excuse that some of them use is that they are so busy doing the work of the people that they can't see the people as often okay. and it, it insults my intelligence because how could you say you're busy working for the people when the things that affect us most the cost of living our salaries proper working environment proper legislation plans and programs and policies not coming to life so what the hell are you busy doing but this is it but let me ask a very simple question as well mm -hmm. if you are too busy how how long does a, a town hall uh meeting last roughly two to three hours max two to three hours a month if you mm -hmm. can't put two to three hours a month on your calendar then you're not fit to serve people there you go it's that simple 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 <laughs> no long talking if you can <laughs> if you can't set aside two hours for the people who elect you then you, you're not there to serve you're probably there to serve your own interests there you go all right, all right. <laughs> now yesterday um in the in the press conference held by um the Sankey Stevens Stevens party um integrity in public life um was one of the major talking points and i've heard yeah. I've heard um, Dr. Drew mention it on a number of occasions where he's saying that the, the Labour Party has already started this practice. They have signed on to a code of ethics. Code of ethics. Uh, right. Can you take us to that, that, that process? How, how was that process for you and what did it entail, if you can speak to that? Well, um, in, in, in detail, I, I can't... I, I probably won't want to go into very much detail at this point with that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that is, I think, because I think that's something that I prefer the party to, to put forth. Mm -hmm. But um, what I can tell you is that there's a whole process in becoming a candidate where mm -hmm. you apply, you're reviewed, you're reviewed on the constituency level. Mm -hmm. um, and I could tell you in constituency four, there were three process of voting in electing, well, four processes in electing mm -hmm. the candidate for constituency number four. So this isn't a hand-picked thing. Mm -hmm. um, the executive, first of all, the applications come in. From all the, the application, the executive ranks the applications. Um, in our case, there was a voting process where persons were allowed to come to the office and vote. Um, and then the executive was asked to vote again after the people would have voted. And then the people were asked to vote again. So there were four um, sessions of voting to, to select the candidate in number four. Um, in those four, uh, any issues that arose was brought to the, ta the, the table mm -hmm. and reviewed by the, the, the candidate selection committee. Then there was an interview with the selection committee where you were grilled as a candidate. So if, if you ever had any skeletons in your closet. <laughs> That's what it came up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they had to make sure that you were good to go in front of the public. Right, right. So, mm -hmm. um, so all these things just to be the candidate. Hmm. The whole process is a grueling process just to be the candidate. The process hmm. started in in August of 2021 and concluded in March of 2022. Wow. Just to be a candidate. Just to be a candidate. They man tear back your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Samuel, I, I think that this is important for the general public to know because... I mean, we've had an example for the past seven years where candidates have so much skeletons in their closet. And you can see where they were prone to corruption. 
And you wonder how is it a political party could bring these people and present them to the general public to vote for. So I think that, you know, you outlining the process clearly shows that the Sinkist Nevis Labour Party is ready to move forward with the integrity in public life process, ready to make sure that the people that they bring to us are of high standard so that we don't have these lot of scandals going around, corruption here, there and everywhere. Somebody put in something in their pocket, the kickbacks, the clothes and watch and shoes and all these type of foolishness. So I, I think that that's very, 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 very important. Um, and, and while we are on that topic, let me say that I'm happy to know that in mm -hmm. all the voting sessions that occurred, of the 250 some odd votes cast, I came up with 248 out of the wow. 250 plus. Wow, that's impressive. So, so overwhelmingly, the people chose Samal Doggins. Which is why the people's choice has been the 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 Because mm -hmm. that was what they they were very clear. This is what we want. This is what we want. There you go. I appreciate that. All right. Well, on that note, uh, we are running out of time. So um, in your wrap-up, could you give a call to the people in the Federation to vote for you and ultimately the Sinkist Nevis Labour Party? And why should they, you know, vote for you guys and put you into office? Well, first and foremost, we've seen what has happened over the last seven years. We've had a, um, a construct, a, a collaborative, um, a coalition government, and we've seen the falling apart of that. And the stability of the, the, the nation is really um, in a horrible state. And the Sinkis Nevis Labour Party right now is the only party that could give you a clean, clear mandate as to a stable government. And that's important for the country moving forward. It's important for investment opportunities and investors. It's important for our own security and our own, um, you know what I mean, development as a people. Outside of that, you see a competent team. This isn't some team that just pulled together randomly just because you need eight candidates. You see a very competent team, like our, our comrade leader in, in and of himself is a successful medical doctor. He understands health. He understands people. When you look at um, our former leader, he has done it successfully. You can't take that away from him. When you look at um, Jeffrey Hanley, we know of Jeffrey's um, progress when it comes to education, when it comes to social development. When you look at Marsha Henderson, a competent, successful lawyer. When you look at Conway Maynard, a successful engineer, a successful entertainer. Um, we've already spoken about me. When you look at Kenny Douglas, successful sportsman and sports trainer, represents the country at the highest level. When you look at um, Leonardo, again, a successful accountant. So as we go through... Um, uh, all eight candidates you see successful individuals in and of their own right so this isn't a team of persons just coming looking for glory everyone would have had their, their time and success in their own fields and offering themselves up now as a means of moving the country forward as a means of serving the people so that for me is um important to note as a part of the mandate also for for the country moving forward i think the Labour Party and the philosophies of the Labour Party at this point in time are important for the good that we can do. In a time when our country is being pulled into this individualistic realm, what's in it for me, what's in it for me, what's in it for me? We want to shift that narrative into what can I do to help? What can we do to help? And that starts from the top, because if your team at the top doesn't believe in that, then the people will not buy into it. And that's why we are where we are, because we have a team that's asking what you want, what you want, tell me what you want. <laughs> Let me give you what you want for your vote, as opposed to saying, how can we work together to build a country? And that's why we've had almost just about zero foreign investment for the last seven years, because there's no concern about building the country. It's all political mileage. An opening ceremony, 
groundbreaking, picture up, forget that project, move on to the next. Mm -hmm. Groundbreaking, picture up, forget that, move on to the next. Do half of it for, for, for the cameras, move on to the next. There's no completion because there's no real driving actually developing the country. And you want a team that's dedicated to that. And I think, and I know that our team is the best team with that dedication. We've seen the other two at work for the last seven years, so there's no question. They are. But when you look at the individuals again, you know that these individuals are serious and committed to their craft. And like nobody will question whether Jeffrey will improve education. Nobody. Definitely. Nobody will question whether Dr. Drew would improve health. Nobody. Nobody will question whether Kenny will improve sports. Nobody will question whether I will improve agriculture. Because you see us doing it in our own lives. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to ensure that as a team, we like a team that we could believe in. We need to like a team that you know you could trust. Because trust is another big issue that I find lacking. Like nobody trusts this government. And how do you how do you move forward with confidence if there's no trust? So you like a team that you could trust. It's like a competent team. It's like a team that's ready to lead and serve the people. All right. Mr. Samuel Duggins, thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule well, thank to you sit again. with us, chat with us, and to bring us up to speed on what your goals and plans and visions are for the people of Constituency 4 and ultimately the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Thanks again. Thank and you. And all the best. Make sure you get some rest, drink a lot of water, my lord. I know. Well, and keep yourself we, we up. Keep the, we keep the water handy. See it there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tawa. Thank you so much, man. Enjoy the rest of your day, yeah. sir. All right. Cheers. All right. Nice. So that's Mr. Samuel Duggins, the Sankis Nevis Labour Party candidate for constituency number four. Very intelligent young man. And uh, you heard from him that we had the opportunity to work together um so 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 much years ago and so i have every confidence that that you know he knows what he's talking about and he's he's ready to work what you're getting from the other side is blame he do it he not do it he do it he do it they never had a vision they never had a plan they were not in touch with what was going on on the grassroots and like he said coming on to the end they only coming to you and just a third term team right now and and me, me, me comment section trying to buy out the people in the comment section. We got the money, you know, white is your one. So when you don't get the money, we're going to become your country. People don't seem to understand that money, the finish, you know, money, the done. Sometimes you break a hundred dollars and you want to know where the hell it be. Sometimes I leave my house with at least five hundred dollars. And by the time I reach back home, if I buck up on my children, them, you know that they're dead. <laughs> buck up on a woman, you know that they're dead. Even if you want to drink something or eat something, that they're dead. So at the end of the day, people, a man may come to you and give you $5,000 or $20,000, but that's going to finish. Because if you don't have a constant flow of revenue coming in to replenish what you deplete, your $20,000 is going to be done. If they don't create real growth in your field, in your career field, in entertainment, in agriculture, in finance, in tourism, in transport, in construction, you name it. If they don't create the policies necessary to see a growth in your industry, whatever money they give you for election, gonna done. And at the end of the day, you might as well better off eating grass. Um, select a skill say Ike, I want to see some Pam PLP candidates on your show as well, my lord. Well, I have put out the invitation. Yesterday I asked Tashio. He told me he would get back to me. Um, he has to speak with um his team to find out, you know, what, what his schedule is like. Um, I've reached out to um one of the Pamites who who is a part of um Natasha Gray's team to ask for an interview. They're still hemming and hawing. What, what they're getting is that they have reservations because they're here at Abuse Pam. So they want to come on my platform. I can't force nobody. I've reached out to the Prime Minister and asked him for an interview. I am still awaiting 
his response from his team to tell me what his schedule is like to see if I can get him on to ask a few questions. I have sent the information to Mark. I've messaged him myself. No response. I guess because they feel as though I am going to ask them the questions that they don't want to answer. They're not going to come. So they want to stay on their own platforms, go to media houses that are quote-unquote friendly to them so that they can continue to push their narrative. But here on this show, it is called Let's Get Real. So if you ain't real, don't make no sense come here. So even though you would like to see them here, I don't feel, I don't think they're going to be comfortable here. Because me going to ask the questions then. It's up to them if they want to answer. There will be no hostility here. Because I know that sometimes I don't want to wrangle up Douglas. Douglas was here the other day. Look how cool me and Douglas talk. I am a consummate professional. But I will ask you your questions though. So, I have reached out. It's for them to return my call and to book a time. It's open, just like freedom. It is open. So, I don't know. <laughs> it's up to them. But anyhow, as we get closer and closer to wrap up, of course, the telephone line is now open if you wish to make a call or if you wish to make a contribution. There's my cash up if you're in the United States. There's my PayPal. If you want to drop me a little sugar cake and make me feel all right, do God bless you. But the telephone lines are open. There's the number, 760-9694. If you want to be a part of this conversation, come on in. Let's chat. And you understand? Oh, Lord, somebody said they want to cuss like girls. But this is why, look, everything that I do in life, there's a vision to it. You heard Samuel just speak about it. There's a vision. I know what I want to achieve, and I know how I'm going to achieve it. Everything about me is meticulous and properly chosen. The names that I put to things, let's get real. So if you're not going to be real, don't come here. Look, the other day I had a gentleman from Nevis. Come on. And he said, you care? You know, I agree with you. I said, okay, fine. No problem. If you don't agree with me, that's fine. But hear my point and hear where I'm coming from. And you see the motor where he went down with? He know what hush? He doesn't want to listen to anything else. Because he has already made up in his mind that that is what it is. You can't reason with people like that. You can't have a conversation with people like that. You can't debate people like that. I don't have a problem with listening to anybody's position. I don't have a problem with it. I will sit and listen. Even if I feel to myself that you're chatting garbage, I'm going to sit and I'm going to listen. Because at the end of the day, what I want to accomplish is to completely hear where you are coming from and see if there is something in there that I could say, okay, fine. I see where you're coming from. I understand where you're coming from now. But if you can't properly articulate your position with facts and stats, then ultimately when you come to somebody who's ready to debate you, you're going rah-rah. You is going to rah-rah. Whether you want to admit it or not, you're going rah-rah. <laughs> but... Let's take this call that's coming in. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Uncle E.K. How are you, my, my brother? Good morning, sir. I am doing pretty good. What about you? I'm doing pretty okay. Let me express my uh, my regards to the Labour family and you and all the, the friends of Shem. I hope that we will be able to find closure to this matter and find peace. Right. Now, we, uh, you played, I think, two clips earlier before summer with the premier trying to expose uh, whoever they expose in Juicy and, uh, and Patches. Mm -hmm. The thing is, Ike, Matt Bantley is such a pathological, shameless liar that everything he says, or almost everything he says, you have to take with a grain of salt. Because he keeps saying that he has 
evidence. He is speaking the truth. He do not tell lies. And at every turn, we find out that he's lying. Because he lies so much, I cannot take anything that he would have said on the show last night. Mm. I am not saying it is not true. Because from all reports that they're getting, this team unity construct was a bunch of leech or leeches. They were in there to suck this country and to see what they get for themselves. And while he is pointing his finger at Patches and Juicy, I wonder how many of them pointing back at him. Mm. The question must be asked as the Minister of Foreign Affairs and going all over the place. Did his law firm receive or got any client from those countries? Is his law firm involved in the Citizen by Investment Program? Was he able to uh, influence anybody from what they see that he brought back really not for the country to be a part of the CBI program through his law firm? Because he's given the impression that he benefited nothing. And so these are questions that should be posed to him. What, what, what did he derive personally or his company derive from his tenure as Minister of Foreign Affairs? But the bottom line, AK, the bottom line is, uh, I'll close with this. This premier of Nevis is a shameless, pathological liar. And therefore, anybody with integrity will take anything that he says with a grain of salt. Thank you, my brother. All right. Thank you so much for your call as well. Again, the number to call is 760-9694. Yes, we are taking your telephone calls here at this time. So if you wish to join the conversation, you may do so at any point in time. But the point has to be made. And... Again, I said to the people of Kayon, based on what the premier said last night on his show, in cabinet, Patches was adamant that he don't want bead. Bead already had water to put into the system. Bead had the water ready. So Sean had to know as well. So Sean is just as guilty as Patches. Patches was a Pam candidate. Sean knew that Patches was keeping water from UNK on. He knew. And so now he bring back a leak. I'm going to continue to make the point. How could you vote for Sean and back a leak on Pam? Knowing fully well that Patches was a Pam, Sean and Mark knew Patches was the one standing in the way of people getting water and they did nothing. But now that they fired and they followed, we now know what the problem is. Let's go back to the telephone lines and see what our callers have to say on this front. Hello. Good morning, you're on. Good morning, AK. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. What about you? I am doing wonderful. Great. Ike, when you when you hold the foot to the fire, they get vexed with you. Mm -hmm. But I am here. I am in the U.S. There was a caller on Monday who charged us overseas. I am overseas, but I am fighting for the persons who don't have a voice, who cannot speak for themselves. Because me just fighting. Mm -hmm. When I was home, I was fighting. And I'm up here and I'm still going to fight. You hear? Because as long as you're not singing, Mark, Timothy, Sean, and them praises, you get battered. You have to tell you? Mm -hmm. But the only man who can silence me is God. I have told you over and over again, I have used friends and, if they're, and they're not my friends because you can't be my friend. If you see something that is going wrong and sitting down 
and keeping quiet because you're getting what you're getting and I must sit down and talk to it. No. Hmm. I'm not going to keep quiet. So who's trying to quiet me? They're not going to do it. And they're not going to get it done because I'm going to be the voice for those who don't have a voice. Mark, all of them was in there. All of them had dirty in it. Dirty, dirty in it, big time. Because all of them signed to it. He wasn't that lie on the wall. He wasn't a watch under the table. He was sitting right. down in a chair. Yeah. And coming to us now today to tell us all that happened. But where was he? They cost Dr. Douglas from talking to Clark to Bagaya. Then let him have it left, right, and center. Think it was up in a terrible state, they say. Look at where we are today. Are we any better off? And I'm going to continue asking the question. Are we better off than where we were 2015? So I am asking my neighbors people to go out on election day, whenever it is, and vote him out. He don't have no use for you all. When his pocket was pulling, you wasn't here in his mouth. But he's opening his mouth now because his pocket is a little empty. And he don't have the amount of money to lavish over me this. And this third term thing, money can buy whatever they want to buy, but money cannot buy love. Money cannot buy happiness. Ike, good, have a blessed good morning. Have a blessed morning to you as well. This is what is happening here in this country. And nobody could convince me to absolve Sean and Matt Brantley of all the shit that took place for the past seven years. Nobody could convince me of that. I don't care. Nobody could convince me to absolve them. So if Timothy must go, they got to go with him. They have to go with him. Call here on. Thank you so much for calling. Okay, good morning. How are you, sir? I'm doing pretty well. What about you? Bye, bye, goodbye. Your smile says it all. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> you can, you can, I'm sorry. Uh, what, what, I, 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 I love Henry. Henry. Mm -hmm. Um, the lady mentioned, I just saw the gentleman for it, uh, before that la um, the lady. He said something that you played to, to, um, to tape or something like that with Matt Brandy. Yes, last night he was on his show on a rant. Okay, so, um, just, um, he said that Patches, Matt Brandy said that Patches, he, um, he didn't want to, um, um, put water or something like that in k -On. Yes. It is a company. It was a company that was about to do it. Yes, the company B was contracted to dig wells and provide water. Patches so, stopped B from providing that oh water because he wanted another company to go and do what B done do already. So Marcella and them, they were right in Parliament in saying that. Ah, uh, you remember they were saying something like that? Ah, uh, and they were shot down by the Mr. Speaker and all these guys, you know, uh, the same group, you know. There you go. I remember when they there said, Yes, Labour already put something in place with a company when they got in. They stop it. All right, stop it. Please, <laughs> okay, so you're telling me people listen to all these things. Start coming out the sewer and tell me about shark ain't got no teeth in there. I know what it is. I mean, you can have enough to convince somebody. Okay. Human nature is such, but you can don't fool yourself, you know. How long about man he died? It could go on and on, yes. And his song still live on, right? Mm -hmm. How long did Messiah die? Yeah, sure. Hmm. Over 2,000 something years now. Mm -hmm. And his story still lives on. And you could go on and on with the historical damn thing. Never you stop the what you're doing. Never. Even though you have the same truth, continue, continue. Because people tend to forget. Mr. Blanchett, he's doing a wonderful job as well. 
He is reminding us, taking us back and bringing us forward. Continue. Don't care what he said. Tom, Toad, Toad, Photo, Toad, however you call him. Timothy, do not take them on. I know you don't take them on, but he's a man who speaks and stand up for yourself. But don't. They, they, they intention is to stop your mouth. Your mouth is a what? It is a trumpet. It is a trumpet. It is blowing a tune. At the end of the day, it's going to echo in their head when they lay down and all by themselves. Don't mind it like they a with any emotion, it. you know. Because you're a man who wants more emotion. You want facts. When they sit and they relax, they say, Miam. don't worry, they're going to play the game. When they get behind there, to put the X. Okay. Conscience won't come into play. Don't fool yourself. Conscience won't come into play. <laughs> they will take money. They will take money. You remember what happened? You remember? Forward to the 2015 election. You remember what happened? Who was giving out things and so on? Labour was doing it. Sam was doing it. But Labour was giving out a lot of things. I remember. Mm. And what happened? People vote against them still. In work. Yep. In work. In work. You and I again, you remember when Pam used to got the, the, the plane load coming down? Mm-hmm. When they come down, and then when was it? When Labour Force got into power? That was um, 95. 95, right? Mm-hmm. You remember they, they, they came with the Pam shot. She was in all the mock waiting for them to welcome them. Man, you know, when Superman take off, he, 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 he reveal himself. Good. But them man take off and red up the cave, pull red up. Mm-hmm. Them man, boy. Take it to tell you, human could only stand. And that same as, thing happened. You know, that same yeah. thing happened in 2015 too. You know, people had uh-huh. on, people had on the labor shot, and on the labor <laughs> shot was the team unity shot. Oh my goodness! Okay, you think <laughs> Some, somebody, somebody was saying, um, you, they saw um a, um a truck load of people, a pickup load of people, right? Um, going lay flag and everybody in the back. They saw someone as unity win. Oh my goodness, yes. yo. But the same pick up, the kuna is it was saying it? Somebody. Miss it, the same pick up. The same this, pick up. He had a labor stickers. It was a rental. They had a palm oh flag in goodness. there. Palm shot, team unity shot. What you saying? You think people easy? <laughs> you can't buy people go play game good, you know. I'm telling you. Very well, very well. You think you can learn. I'm telling Could you. Work psychology. Okay. Could play the emotion. All Trust right. me. Anyway, take care, everybody. All right. Give All thanks right. for your call. So if I think a joke, here Mark, who are yourself again? Any him? Any him? Mhm. 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 All right. Caller, good morning. You're on. Good morning, DJ. Morning, sir. Yeah, you know, this is the boy, Kosi. Mm-hmm. I oh. call to compliment you on the show that you put down as a young man and a young journalist. Give thanks, man. And you know, we go from way back. Mm-hmm. But, but I must congratulate you as a journalist. Um, like I said, that I have the online there about other candidates coming to the show. I don't know how to come to you so easy. Mm-hmm. Because the questions that you want to ask is not what they want to want to hear. And that's the problem I got with a lot of these other shows. You understand? Mm-hmm. That's the problem I got with a lot of these other shows. The, the people who are doing Why don't you want to ask me a question? I must say, Joe, um, Jamie was excellent the other day when she had um, Jackie. Right. I think Jamie was very excellent with her question. And I, I complimented her online, and I must say, no, it was well. Because we need to ask these people real questions. Not like you we go to them or something. Because the lady, she went to answer the question off the laptop when Jamie was talking to her. You know? But again, I really call to compliment you on a good job you're doing with this show. Give thanks, and keep it up. And not after the election. I'm going to take a little break. I really need a little break now again, but <laughs> keep their foot to the fire. Of course. 
All right, my lad. Give thanks. Yeah, bless up. All right. Yeah, my main source go way back. You know, we're doing this thing long time. Some people say they hear when my access and they want to hear it again. Mark, come in. What do you say again? Talk about the boy. What do you say your name? The fellow there, what name? Can't remember your name now. The, 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 the representative from number one. Patches. Yes, he. Refuse. Refuse. To allow the bead water to go into the, the, the system. What? They think that we don't remember all of these things? He brought another company called Earthworks or something. Say he want them to do the work. Big confusion with bead. Bead said they had water available. What? They don't think that these things will be spoken about. Are you here? Ah, I want to hear it again. Let me hear the fellow there, what's name? Hear it again. Can't remember your name now. The, 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 the representative from number one. Patches. Yes, he. Refuse. Refuse. To allow the bead water to go into the, the, the system. What? They think that we don't remember all of these things? He brought another company called Earthworks or something. Say he want them to do the work. Big confusion with bead. Bead said they had water available. What they don't think that these things will be spoken about. All right. Hello, good morning. All right, we seem to have lost that call. I tell all you so. Them are rat out one another and me like it. Them are rat out one another. Let's go back to the phone lines. Hello, good, good morning. morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, Good morning. Mm -hmm. I have a concern, right? Tell me. Now, I'm a young voter, right? Mm -hmm. And I registered recently. And this thing about fear here, I don't really to understand what it's really all about. You want, because, you want me to explain it huh? to you? You want me to explain it to you? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. It is Mark's contention, right? that Nevis deserves, rightfully so, 25% of the overall receipts of the CBI monies that we have collected, the sale of our passports, okay? He's saying, that, he's saying that for a certain period, saying it would have collected $5 billion. Nevis is owed one point something billion. So he is of the opinion that the Prime Minister should go into the CBI fund, take out one point something billion and give it to the NIA for them to do whatever they want with it. No questions asked. That is fair share. Okay, so what he's saying as I am following up is that certain things in this can't be done. Unless he gets his fair share. So, what happens to the um, NIA money? It is non existent because Mark is a lazy guy. He has not brought anything <laughs> new to Nevis to generate revenue. And he doesn't want you to look at that or ask him a question about that. He is just looking towards the CBI. Hmm. So, you understand? Yes. All right. Anyways, thank you very much for the explanation. You're welcome, darling. And people need to understand that that is what it is. Yesterday, I was speaking to um, a gentleman, and he put things into um, perspective for me. And he said that he, as a kittishan, doesn't have a problem with allowing Nevis their fair share. But... Government money and government revenues is not that's something you can just take up willy-nilly and just pass it out and just give it out just so. No. There must be a plan. There must be a vision. You heard Samal this morning, you know. Remember, every time the government said, well, we give $10 million to the animal farmers and we allotted this million dollars to that and nobody could give an account for the damn money. Nobody could tell you who get what, when, where and how. And nobody could tell you what the returns are because there was not a clear vision and a clear plan in place for checks and balances. That is what Mark wants. No clear plan, 
no clear vision, but just give him the money just so. And the the, the, then there's a federal government. You can allocate a certain amount of percentage of money to social programs, national programs on both islands. This is the fund that you're going to use to tap into it. But the man don't want no accountability. He doesn't want any kind of fact checking. Just give him the money and let him do what he want with it. No. No, sorry, government work. Hello, good morning, you're on. Hello, good morning, you can. Hope you're well. Bless morning, man. I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Um, while we're on the fair share talk, um, I think that we need to take a closer look and a greater discussion has to be had into the concept of fair share based on this parata population basis. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not aware of any type of revenue sharing arrangement that is based solely on a population basis, but it seems to be mm -hmm. like a very questionable economic arrangement at best that we're not looking at income expenditure we're not looking at the individual revenue generation of each entity we're not looking at contributions across the board uh the sustainability of said arrangements um where certain cbi applications are being originated where the money is going. We're just talking about like, yeah, 25% of the population is a Davis, 75% of the Vegas. <laughs> let, let me just give them 25%. I think that that really blows my mind, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> and I think uh, more, more conversation needs to be had around the, the setup of the quote-unquote fair share mm -hmm. because we're actually uh, plugging realistic numbers like the number about one billion is old which you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. <laughs> has been said right so we're actually using real calculations real research real data analysis to go into uh, this fair share journey mm -hmm. whereas i feel the premise in and of itself it's one that's very, 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 very questionable at best. I'm not saying that Nevis doesn't deserve its fair share, no. No, nobody's ever or said that. that. they don't deserve more. Nobody has no, ever no, said no. that. I'm just, I'm just saying that I think we need to come with something um, that's <laughs> a bit more stronger, in my view, than, like, let's say, just 25%. And after the analysis is done, give them whatever that it is that they need to do to progress the beautiful island of Nevis. And let's move on to this think it's versus Nevis battle that's been plaguing us for decades. Thanks. I'm in agreement with you, caller. Trust me. All right. Thank you so much for that call. This is the conversation that Mark Brantley doesn't want to have. Let's just be clear and frank about that. He doesn't want to have this conversation at all. There needs to be structure, Mark. There needs to be something in place for checks and balances. You want to check what Timothy is doing with the CBI money. You want checks and balances on Timothy. But you don't want the checks and balances on yourself. Let's put checks and balances in place for both. That is why the SIDF fund was set up. The SIDF had a board. And the SIDF were sent product um, programs and policies and all these kind of things for vetting. So the board can make the decision, okay, this program, fine. This program, no. This program, yes. But Mark don't want no oversight. We have a federal government that is responsible for both islands. We have an NIA that is responsible for one. Let's have a discussion about that. That is why people say, oh, you agree with Timothy? You're going against Nevis. No, I'm mean, going against Nevis. I am for proper setup with a vision. Show me where your plan be. Show me where your plan is. Show me where your social programs are. What is the policy for it? It's like every time, and Dr. Douglas said it when he was here, every time he as the prime minister tried to reach out to Nevis, to give them more access to the federal government. The NIA, whoever it was then, had a problem. 
Vance Amory of blessed memory. And the people of Nevis had never asked Vance Amory a question about why he was so antagonistic towards um, St. Kitts. But every chance they get, they want to paint this picture that somebody in St. Kitts don't like Nevis people. Because that's what Mark say, you know. That somehow the man in St. Kitts feel like Nevis people are second class citizens. Who the hell tell you that? Nobody has ever said that. These are shit that you're selling to your people. You are selling your people poison. The same pepper and bone that are your tribute to Bradshaw is why you, Mark Brantley, sell to Nevis people. You are selling them venom against their counterparts in St. Kitts. That is what you are ultimately doing. Because you were in a government for seven years, sitting with people who you claim came together in the national interest, but in seven years, oh, you couldn't come up with a proper revenue-sharing agreement between the two countries. Proper policies, proper plans, proper programs. And the by time you're not going to damn on the track. You couldn't come up with it because you ain't got none. What new sector have you either introduced or developed in Nevis? Nobody must ask you about that. Keep out a Nevis party because you just want to be able to do what you want to do over there. As if my passport ain't got a Nevis on it. Your passport got on saying it's a Nevis and you want to say and dictate what go on down here. But nobody must ask no question in the Nevis. We must keep out. We're partner none of so you go. I have a vested interest in Nevis as well. You hear? So this damn stupid narrative that you've been pushing? No. Me he can go and push back against it. And who don't want to push back against it, who want to take offense to it, could go right ahead. But we need to hold our politicians accountable. Go and ask Vance Emery why he ain't put something in place for Nevis' fair share when he was premier. Ask him. I bet you don't. Because the people of Nevis love Vance Emery so much, he could do no wrong. But you don't want to have that conversation. You sent emails. And now the Prime Minister asks you, we'll make a cabinet submission now. Bring it up in cabinet and see how Pam feel about it. See how everybody else feels about it. You know, bring it up. But you want to go to a child's son and accord. Vance done dead. When Vance was premier, he signed it and he didn't put nothing in place. He just asked for 30 million a year. That's all that Nevis people was worth to you? 30 million dollars? They say you're not supposed to speak ill of the dead. I'm not speaking ill of the dead. I'm asking a question. With regard to Nevis people. They say, oh Lord, see why Mark ain't going to come on your shaker, you lash him too hard. Me ask the questions them. Show me where your plan is. You want to hold Timothy accountable. Well, I want to hold you accountable too, sir. There needs to be a structure in place for checks and balances. Just give you one point something billion dollars just because of you one. Not even when you go bank for a loan. The bank will just take up the money and give you just so. You got to got a proper plan in place and a drawdown. And you have to give an account for the monies that you use for whatever. When you go for a mortgage, you think they're going to just give you the $400,000 just so? No. Don't work that way. Caller, good morning. Welcome back. Okay. Yes, sir. Hello? Yes, yes you're right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Tell me something. Suppose where 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 um the um the federal government getting that money to um sup um supply news. Where are they gonna get it? No, where 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 are they getting it? Because they, they got some. Oh, you mean the budgetary support? Yeah, the budgetary support. Most likely that this coming from revenues that think is would have collected down here. Or uh, it might be coming from the CBI. I don't know, because Timothy has <laughs> never said. That, 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 oh, okay. Right. He has never said. He has never said so where the money coming from. Oh. Okay. So, okay, but even though we don't know, um, suppose now that source run out of money. Probably that, I'm putting it in an ordinary term. The source in which they're getting from run out mm -hmm. of money. What will happen to Nevis? That's a question for Mark Bradley. <laughs> you know, because it's like a man he gets turned away, expelled from his job, and he go home and just relaxing while he's fighting it, you know, legally. He'll he, he relaxing while he builds them piling up on the sun and has 
other option when you go and get something lesser, you know, a job that you could get just to sustain him in the meantime between time. So, you know, you just stay home and sitting down on your bum, ain't doing nothing. Okay. What happened to your children? What happened to your, 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 again, your bills? So you don't care about Nevis then? He doesn't care about Nevis. And he's proven to me too, Ike, even though I am one who, right, I, I agree that he was supposed to get the right, the, 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 the right for sure. But in the meantime, between the, what, 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 um, uh, what is it, Mark Brandley is doing? No, don't ask him that. Otherwise, you're <laughs> you, you out of your this, place. But this man is so bright that he believes he outsmart the Federation. Where he could outsmart Sean, but he can't outsmart me and Timothy. <laughs> You see, what is happening? What is happening now? You know, he catching up with him now. You know, oh. he catching up with him. That is oh. what happening. He really is, boy. I can't get out of this one. You know, you know. Let's have a conversation. I lie so much. I, I, uh, no, you see the gentleman calling from Nevis, and he, he, he I mean, he, you know, he explains certain things about my family. Everything, and again with this water um, thing in Ankeon, right? Is that it's shown me clearly that everybody, everybody, um, they were doing their own thing. Everybody, mm-hmm. how Patrick could just stop a project like that? Okay. How? And and then you have the, you have um, the, the, the the prime minister. The prime minister should have said no. You can't do that. You did it with condition. You did it. I mean, come on. And Hamilton, Hamilton should stand up, stand, stand up against up for that. Stand up people. Young people, but, no, but all them together now, what? Patches, oh Timothy, goodness. Hamilton, all them together now, <laughs> Sydney Asborn, oh Michael God. Powell. What I tell you, all them together now. Oh, but then all of a sudden, now, okay, I'm gonna get water. Oh, okay, I'm gonna get water now. Ah, wow, right. okay. wow, you see the game that they're playing with people when it, when it suits them. So you must suffer it suits them. until when it, it suits, suits them, them politically. My goodness, human being, ah, the dealing with human being, the nastiness. and then they don't come and tell you, put me back in again. Oh, but he can tell you, don't stop singing, you know. N- never, don't continue. Never, I tell you, you're gonna echo in the ear when they okay. when they relax themselves at night all by themselves. Okay, you're gonna hit them when they get behind India, they're gonna say, Bye, not me again. Trust me, take, take care you. yourself. All right, take, take care. Again. It must be put into perspective. You understand? Timothy knew. Timothy with patches. So Timothy sat there and allowed the people of Kayon, Bird Rock, Frigate Bay, and other places to go without water when nighttime come. Because patches was doing his bidding. And ZIZ, attacking people and so, personally, and attacking the other members of Team Unity. Are you see? Are you understand? All of them sat in cabinet and allow this atrocity to continue. So I want to hear what Kayan people going to tell me now. I want to see if Kayan people going to go back with a Pam who sold them out. Who did not stand up for them. Oh, you love to say that Kayon is Pam. A Pam how we be. Well, the Pam had some of you. Going days without water. Because one of their candidates said, Minawan bead. Bead done got the water. I'm a accessor. <laughs> the same mark who want to come down here and give you Pam. Yeah, you Sean. You hear? A Pam minister said no to bead. Who done had the water, done do the work, according to Mark. Because he wants some other company to do it. Why he ties me to the other company? Why was it so important for him to get the other company? Stoneworks already asked any him, according to Mark. Why was it so important to get them? And me mustn't ask Sean and Mark a question. Hello, good morning. 
Okay. Yes, you're right. The, the geothermal development in Nevis. Mm-hmm. Under the Nevis Reformation Party, they would have dug exploratory wells. Mm-hmm. One of those wells was situated in Hamilton, just above where I'm living. And it was proven that the resource was there because when they dug that well, and they released the resources for us to see. You could have tapped in Charleston on the pier and see the steam going up in the air. You could have tapped all the way in Jessup's and hear that well singing. For whatever reason, the Council of Citizens Movement felt that it was necessary for them to make sure that that project did not go forward. We know the story of them right, right into the funding agency who was trying to fund it and said, don't. But what happened? Just a shot while ago, EK. The Nevis Island Administration brought in a jury rig from America to dig and next explore Kerry well at the very same site where one is already. EK. Yes, you're right. But what is the, the geothermal? Yes, go ahead. The, the, there was absolutely no reason for that. But what? Who stood to benefit? Who benefited from this particular company coming from Utah, Web, and United States to come here? Who was the legal representative of that company? And so, again, I am not saying Patches did what this man said. But the same finger that he's pointing at Patches should be, pointed, be pointing back at him. What happened to the geothermal in Nevis? The second thing, EK, you were the person who was championing the cause for uh, the, the decriminalization of marijuana. Yep. It is something that I supported. And I supported it wholeheartedly after I heard you uh, and the lady female doctor explain it. For especially for the, the medicinal purposes of, of that thing. And whether it was for you to smoke, to drink, or to eat, I personally believe that that stigma that is put on it should be removed. One of the greatest detractors of that was Mark Bantley. <laughs> he was one of the foremost individuals condemning that and condemning you and the doctor and the NRP he said it can't happen. Mm-hmm. It must not happen. All right. And today, the same man is now champion of putting the car for the same marijuana. <laughs> the hypocrisy of these individuals. <laughs> and and, and, and the, the list goes on. Again, when, when the geothermal thing came up, I, I was surprised to find out that the geothermal thing started on the CCM. And when NRP came in and said, this is something to run with, and they, 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 they took it forward. Who fought against it to destroy it and to stop it? The same control through the Sue's movement. And Mark Wantley was one of the leading voices condemning geothermal for Nevis. The, 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 the list is there. One of the leading voices in Nevis for a fisheries complex for Nevis was Mark Wantley, even before Malcolm Bishop started to work on it. Who led the charge to stop the fishery, fisheries project for Nevis, which was a gift to me with more $30 million. It was a cost of a cent. And so, w- w- when he's pointing fingers at others, and pointing fingers at, uh, at Sinket, I am saying that Nibi Jones need to hold him accountable for the things that he and CPM has done in Nevis to retard the progress of Nevis. No wonder that we don't have no money in our, eco- in a, uh, our economy. Because whatever was there to bring money into the economy, because he was not in charge and they were not in charge, it, it, was, it was not good for Nevis. Hmm. And now they get in charge, all of a sudden, the very same thing becomes good for Nevis now. The hypocrisy of these people. And as they say, those who support them need to take the blinkers out of their eyes, as you normally say, open up their eyes wide, and stop voting for their belly, after voting for their party, but begin to vote for their children and their children's future. Not even me, because I'm not voting for me, me an old man now. I don't live. 
But I have children, I have grandchildren and great-grandchildren. I'm looking at their future. And their future is not secured with the Council and Citizens Movement because they are not about the empowering of the people of Nevis, but empowering themselves. Thank for them for giving me a voice, my brother. Sure, no problem, my brother. Thank you so much and have yourself a great day. The point must always be made that all of them were complicit in abusing their power and their position and putting the people of St. Kitts and Nevis on the back burner. So this thing about um, putting people first. Timothy, how you was putting the people of Kayan first? When you allow patches to stop bead from putting the water in, explain it. I don't know what the, what the arrangement was with bead, but explain it to me. Why did you sit there as chairman of the cabinet, as prime minister of this country, and allow the people of Kayon to suffer the way that they did? And now you can bring them Gitalbo. A vote for Talbo is a vote for Timothy Harris. Kayon people. Monkey Hill people too. A vote for Talbo is a vote for Timothy Harris. Timothy Harris allowed Patches, his mouthpiece, to deny bead putting the water into the service. You hear? Okay. Since I need me to say it, see, I say it. All of them, collective responsibility, that is the cabinet. If you ever went a day or two, or if you ever going right now, because right now when me come home, depending on what time me come home, me can't wash my skin. So if I pick up a little something down the road and say, girl, now we go up and, eh, yeah, ah, we can't be it. Can I water there? And you hear Mark say, Patches is the one responsible for that. Patches with Tim. Patches was a Pam. He run on a PAM platform. Milo, wrong time, wrong party. Somebody said, Talbot going to abuse me. That's okay. You give me some bad one and all. Me not take it personal. I don't say what I say. Talbot ain't do me nothing. Me ain't do Talbot nothing. But a vote for Talbot is a vote for Timothy. You remember when you say, oh, a vote for this is a vote for Douglas. Well, a vote for Talbo is a vote for Timothy. Timothy and Patches saw. You see? Patches is a Timothy. Patches is a PLP after Pam got rid of him. They all sat there and allow you to go with Rusty Balls and Meme Gina because Patches according to Mark, who was in the cabinet, said he no want be put the water in the system. He want the next company come and do it. Adem says so no me. So you have a choice to make in this next general election. You hear from Samuel this morning. He intends to keep monthly town halls right through. To update his people. Those are the kind of commitments that we need. And if he don't do it, I'm going to remind his ass every single month. I got his number, so I'm call him. Who here? I'm going to call him. Ladies and gentlemen, it's 11 after 11. That's all the time we have for this morning. I hope that you guys enjoy the presentations. Uh, tomorrow is Friday. I don't think I'm going to be on tomorrow morning simply because tomorrow is the child month march. It's been a lot, what, two years? About that since we had a child month march. And I'm going to be playing on the road for the kids tomorrow. So be sure to come on out, support. We're starting at 9 o'clock. So, no, let's get real tomorrow. I am sorry. <laughs> Miss Brown, <laughs> give me a chance now, man. <laughs> Folks, enjoy the rest of your day. It was indeed a good show. 
and I'll see you guys uh, Monday. Um, hopefully, Stashi and his team will get back to me and I can have a PLP candidate from Sandy Point on Monday. If all goes well. I'm, I'm not too sure he's going to go. Somebody said not only bead um, the bead, but patches also stop the solar farm over Frigate Bay. So if you electricity like bill I kill you, Apache's fault. And we must vote to them there again. Eh? No time. So people, again, have yourself a blessed day. I'm going to see you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the music festival. And just please, as much as possible, be safe. All right? Goodbye for now. Mm-hmm.